Today I'm going to build some cabinets for an office. For this project, I'm going to patina some copper to inlay into the cabinet doors and top the whole thing off with a live edge slab that has some ebony bow ties hand inlaid into it. To start this project out, I had all the materials delivered to the shop. The slabs were so large that it took up so much room I decided to start building the countertops first. To get them to a more manageable size, I bucked them into their basic length with my chainsaw. The slabs were pretty warped, so I set up a router sled to flatten them out and get them to their final thickness. The slabs weren't wide enough to cover the full countertop depth, so I bought a second slab from the same flitch to be sure the coloration and grain patterns matched up. Then I laid them side by side to match the grain as best as I could and then cut off the excess to create a seam where the grain blended together the best. I didn't want to crush the live edge by tightening down the clamps too much, so I used glue blocks instead to pull the seam tight. Then I spent some time laying out the bow tie placement and hand inlaid a few to dress up the slab. Once I was happy with the top, I started milling up and ripping to width some walnut for the face frames. Then I set up my stop on my miter gauge so I could quickly cut all the pieces to the exact same length. For the longer rails, my miter gauge was too short, so I set up a stop block on my fence that was set back from the blade so the material would clear it before cutting the piece to prevent it from getting pinched between the fence and the blade. My main joinery method is going to be floating tenons, so I used the domino to make quick work of mortises. Now most cabinets are made where each cabinet is its own box and are screwed together on site. For this project, the client wanted to be able to hide some of their office equipment like a printer and paper shredder inside the cabinet. So with all the things they wanted to hide, the extra thickness from the sides of each cabinet took up too much room to fit everything in. So instead of individual boxes, I made three large boxes with dividers. So that's why this face frame has three openings. Now that I have all three face frames glued up, I needed to cut the dados to accept the plywood for the dividers in the sides. This dado is to accept the tops and bottoms. The part I hate most about building cabinets is hefting around the heavy three quarter thick pieces of plywood. Especially with today's modern plywood, the veneer is so thin if you scratch it, there is no sanding out the scratch without getting into the core. So right now I'm cutting out the bottom, the divider, and the sides of the cabinets. Now that I have the case parts roughed out, I set up a stop block at the bandsaw to cut out the notch for the toe kick. A couple of the cabinets are going to have adjustable shelves, 
So I used my shop made jig with the collar and my router to punch out the holes for the shelf pins. This is the bottom of one of the cabinets. The vertical dividers are going to sit in the stop dados, so I use my router to create the dados and chisel them square at the end. This is the inner web frame that is going to add some additional stability to the cabinet for the file drawers. I'm creating the joinery with a simple tongue and groove joint and pre-assembled them. We're going to have drawers hidden behind doors. So this is the interface frame that is going to hide the soft close hardware and give something the drawer to overlay. This will create a really nice clean detail once installed with the drawers. There were a couple of spots where the board was slightly bowed when the data was cut so it didn't cut at full depth. I used the router plane to clean up these areas so they wouldn't throw the cabinet out of square when assembled. Now that I had all the smaller sub-assemblies glued up, it was time to assemble the case. Since this case has multiple dividers that needed to go in just at the right time, I glued it up in sections. I glued the bottom to the face frame first. Then added the sides and made sure the case was square. One of the cabinets is going to sit on the floor covering up the vent for the furnace, so we couldn't just cover it up. For that cabinet, I created a custom toe kick with a vent in it that allowed the air to flow through it. I ripped a bunch of thin strips to act as vertical dividers, then cut half laps in them with the data blade. For the horizontal dividers, I got a little smarter and cut all the dados first, then ripped them to width after the fact. That saved me a bunch of work. This cut is kind of mesmerizing. Then I just took my time gluing up all these pieces. During assembly, I made sure I kept the horizontal divider in order so the grain flowed from one piece to the other. I realized that few people are going to be laying on the floor to notice this detail, but it still makes me happy knowing that it's there. Now that the cabinet cases are together, it was time to start on the doors. Since I'm going to be gluing some copper to the door fronts, I wanted to minimize wood movement. So I'm resawing some veneer to glue to the plywood substrate to make the door panels. Then I set up my veneer bag to press it all together. For the door frames, I milled up some walnut stock and set a dado stack to cut the grooves to accept the panels. Each piece got two passes. By cutting one pass, then flipping it around to cut the second pass, it ensures that the dado will be centered on the workpiece. I set up a stop on my miter gauge and trimmed them all to length. I set up a dado blade to cut the tongue and the rails to join the frame together. This first piece is a scrap piece that I milled at the same time so I could do a test cut to set the blade to the correct height and not risk screwing up my actual work pieces. Once I was satisfied with the fit, I cut the rest. Then cut the panels to their final length and width. The data was sized to the thickness of the panel, but in certain areas I wanted to overlap the copper. 
So I marked out those areas and set up a offset at the router table to widen those dados in the areas that the copper is going to go. Then when I assembled the door frame and panels in the areas where the copper is going to go, I slid a small wedge of copper in place to be sure that any glue squeezed out of the dado didn't glue the panel in an unfortunate location to where I couldn't get the copper in later. Now it was time to cut and patina the copper pieces for the grid and the doors. I started out cutting the long strips with my track saw. This worked out fine. However, when it came to cutting the smaller pieces, I felt they were a bit too small to safely hold, so I ended up scoring and snapping them off with a utility knife. To patina the copper was a bit of a science experiment to get the colors I wanted. I first sandblasted each piece. I don't have room in my shop for a sandblasting cabinet, so I used a handheld blaster and a large garbage bag to contain the mess. This worked out really well, even though it was probably a little bit slower than if I would have had a cabinet. I want to mention that before I started, I thoroughly researched the chemicals I used to fully understand what safety precautions I needed to take, and I took all those safety precautions. Next, I mixed up some potash to etch the copper. I used a mesh to create a pattern and randomly dabbed each piece. I did both sides, so when it came time to use them, I could pick out which side I liked best. I ground up some cupric sulfate and mixed them with water and dissolved the crystals. Then this sludge I'm weighing out, I made a week prior. It's what's called a Japanese rusty salt. At least that's my best guess at the translation. Basically, you mix up the solution and let it sit for a week. The stuff that falls out of solution is the Japanese rusty salt. And then I decanted the rest of the solution and set it aside for another potentially dangerous project in the future. I put it on a decommissioned barbecue, i.e. no longer food safe, and heated it up. Then I boiled the copper in the solution for a few minutes and then quenched it in a bucket of water. Next I milled down some material for my mullions and routed out a shallow rabbit to lap over the edge of the copper. Then I assembled the grid on the door, gluing down the copper and mullions. To be sure I had good contact, I used a vacuum bag to apply pressure across the whole panel. I covered each piece of copper with some hardboard to be sure the mesh from the vacuum bag would not leave an imprint on the copper finish. Next up was building the drawer boxes. I did a little routing for the dovetails, cut a few dados for the bottom, measured and cut to length, then on the drawers for the filing cabinet I cut notches for the metal file folder hangers. Then when the file cabinet isn't completely full, to prevent the file folders from sliding to the back, I cut a ladder to drop a stop in. This stop is glued to the inside of the file drawers along the top edge. And then I assembled all the drawers. To hold the file folders, I marked the steel bar and cut it to fit. Then 
on my baby CNC, I cut out a file folder backstop and rounded it over at the router table. Then I installed the hinges for the doors and the soft close hardware for the drawers and headed out to the client to install it. <laughs> 